know there are thousands of operations inside of SOLIDWORKS. We don't use them all every day. Um, keyboard shortcuts, I would personally think those definitely fall underneath this category. Or maybe it's one of those really, really slick ways of doing things in SOLIDWORKS that maybe nobody else knows about. Those really sneaky ways that make you look like what I like to call a SOLIDWORKS hero. Um, or maybe it's just all of the above. I mean, one thing that I've found out in my years of using SOLIDWORKS is one person's tip or a trick is another person's user, you know, every single day-to-day -day way of, of doing things. So I like to think of a tip and trick really is anything that helps you be more efficient, that kind of helps you out while you're using SOLIDWORKS. And that's really what I'm going to look at focusing here. So honestly, it, this is just a random assortment of some different tips that I like to use in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, I have a nice little cheat sheet for all the sketching relation callouts that I leverage. I use this quite a bit in my essentials classes few keyboard shortcuts I'm a fan of. You can obviously customize anything and everything to a keyboard shortcut just about inside of SOLIDWORKS. But there's just a handful that I find myself using almost every single time I, I create a sketch inside of SOLIDWORKS. And I'm going to go through a few examples. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate every single bullet point I have in my presentation, like Bob mentioned. This is going to be recorded. The presentation will be up there. And some of these are just names of commands that I recommend uh, you know, maybe digging into the software, ask, ask questions. You know, I'm going to throw my email address up at the end, and I'm more than happy uh, to address any questions that come in after the fact. So like I said, the first thing I like to just focus on is just a relations cheat sheet. Those little icons for the, the callouts of our relations in the graphics window, they're not very large, and sometimes it's easy to misinterpret coincidence with midpoint. So I just created this, and... Uh, you know, even though I've been using SOLIDWORKS for almost 20 years, I still have this posted in my office. I find myself glancing to it uh, maybe more than I actually realize. So just one of those things that I've found can be a little bit helpful. So keyboard shortcuts. As I've been looking through the way that I use SOLIDWORKS, these are the keyboard shortcuts that I use day in and day out, starting with the S key literally the letter S on the keyboard, and I am not exaggerating when I think this is the greatest thing ever inside of SOLIDWORKS. I'll show you how to use this. I'll show you how to customize it. Um, in my opinion, it can be a huge time saver. Another really nice keyboard shortcut that's been added more recently is the letter D, and that brings the confirmation corner right to where the mouse is. I think of a lot of tips as anything we can do in SOLIDWORKS to eliminate mouse movement, to eliminate you know the kind of hunting and pecking Throughout the, uh, throughout the user interface that we can do. The letter A switches from lines to arcs and vice versa. It also toggles from circle types. If you're creating a, a center or diameter-based circle, if you hit A, it'll switch to a perimeter circle. One that I find uh, kind of surprises people when I bring it up in ad advanced classes is holding down the shift key to control how a dimension goes to arcs. Now that's one of those where I think everybody knows it, and, and I'm definitely uh, incorrect in that assumption. And then finally, the control key. The automatic sketching behavior is fantastic in SOLIDWORKS, and that's what allows us to capture our design intent on the fly. But we all know we don't want relations to everything all the time. So if you hold down the control key, it will shut the automatic relations off temporarily, and releasing the control key will, will bring it back. So let's go ahead and, you know, let's take a look at a couple of these. Le how to leverage that S key. You know, another one that just kind of popped into my head. Drawing one entity at a time, hold down that left mouse button. Big fan of crossing and window selection to add relations. And here we'll take a look at that, that shift to control the art condition. So I do want to emphasize, none of the sketches that I'm going to be creating here today are super complex. They're really basic examples. But here I've just hit the S key, and again, that brings up the shortcut toolbar. Hopefully this isn't new to anyone. I hope everybody has tried this. If not, definitely take a look. Uh, you can right click on it and customize it. And you can customize it for sketches, parts, assemblies, and drawings. Now I'm not going to go really deep into customizing it. I just want you to know that it's there and you can add any command to any palette. For example, this is my sketching toolbar. 
but I also have extruded boss and extruded cut because that's kind of the workflow that I tend to use more than anything. So I'm going to start off with the S key to grab a midpoint line and just using the cursor feedback really quick drop a line in there. Again, S key over to a circle and just draw a couple of circles in here. And obviously they're, they're not the same size. So this is where I really like to leverage a right to left crossing window. Remember right to left is crossing, left to right is window. So just a little uh, kind of side tip there. I find myself personally using a ton of window and crossing selections in SOLIDWORKS. And I'm just going to simply make that equal. Another thing that I really leverage are the pop-up toolbars in SOLIDWORKS. Those needed or pertinent commands are always right at the tip of the mouse and makes it much easier than trying to find where everything is inside the UI. So now let's add in a dimension and I want to control the overall length of this sketch. And this is where holding down the shift key. You know, if we don't hold down the shift key, we all know that SOLIDWORKS will always dimension center to center whenever we're dealing with uh, circles or arcs or things like that. But if we hold down the shift key, we now have I'll say gesture-based dimensioning. And it's specific to where we put the mouse. So the near side, kind of that middle quadrant will snap to the center or that far quadrant will allow me to go, you know, outside diameter to outside diameter. Now this is one of those things that's been in the software for quite some time and we still always have the option that when we select a dimension, we can go to the leaders tab over in the property manager on the left and we're just dynamically changing what's referred to as the art condition as I cycle through a couple of these. So you can do that dynamically while holding down the shift key. Now that's one that uh, seems to be lesser known from time to time. So a couple more things that I like to do. Again, really simple kind of silly sketches. Dynamic mirror. It's not on the default sketching toolbar. I think it should be. I'll show you how to add that there. Uh, a faster way to use the other sketch mirror, an angle dimension with one line, like you see that 35 degree dimension up there. You don't have to actually sketch that horizontal line to add a dimension to it. And the power trim command, another one of these operations that me personally, I use it constantly and uh, we'll take a look at it. It's kind of integrated, hidden, undo operation. So a few more tools that I really like to use and emphasize inside of SOLIDWORKS sketching. I'm going to drop in another sketch on the front plane here. And the first thing I want to point out is dynamic mirror is not on the default sketching toolbar. So where is it? Well, this is where we can use another powerful tool in SOLIDWORKS called command search. And if you hit the S key, for the shortcut toolbar, command search in the upper right-hand corner is automatically activated. That's kind of 1A and 1B as why as I personally love the shortcut toolbar. And I'm just going to search really quick. I get to DY and SOLIDWORKS has already found dynamic mirror entities. Now you can use the eyeball and SOLIDWORKS will show you where that command is located. And it's kind of buried under tools and sketch tools. And that may not be a location that we remember all of the time. So another thing that we can do directly from command search is grab the command, drag and drop, and add that command to any toolbar. So a super easy way to customize the UI. So back into some sketching here. I'm just going to draw on a real quick vertical line. I'm going to S key over again to dynamic mirror entities because that's one of the first things I do is customize my UI to add dynamic mirror. And now whatever I mirror on the left, or sketch on the left, excuse me, is instantly mirrored on to the right and vice versa. So we'll go ahead and just draw in, you know, a real simple shape here, kind of that uh, very basic airplane outline I had. And you can see just as fast as I click the mouse, everything is mirrored to the other side. And another tool I want to use to generate the very simplified nose cone is to hit the A key. And that'll switch me from a line to an arc. Here we can see how that behaves. Now, an important rule when mirroring in a sketch is make sure you don't cross that center line or you'll get duplicate entities that overlap. So I'm just going to infer that vertical point right there, and we can see how we can put that in there. So again, when you're sketching a line, and I'll kind of show it here over on the side just for another example. So click, mouse, click, and you can see I have dynamic mirror still enabled. But if I hit the A key, it'll switch over to uh, either a tangent arc, 
if the A key again switches to a line, if I come more in the perpendicular direction, you'll see the other possible solution there. So a really handy way to just jump between lines and arcs. Now I'll use a couple of crossing windows here since I uh, really don't need that additional information. So that dimension for the, uh, the sweep back of the wings, how do we create that without adding anything else? Well, that's just a regular dimension and we'll select the line at an angle and then the point. And then we have this cross with these axes and we can specify you know, two different horizontal, I'll say datums for the dimension or two vertical. And this is something that SOLIDWORKS added a couple of releases ago and it's really convenient for adding these angular dimensions without needing all that extra construction geometry. So another little uh, simple tip on the side there. What about power trim? So here we can see just another little simple sketch kind of some nonsense entities in there. We'll go into edit sketch mode. And again, here's that S key. Might be getting sick of me saying it, but that S key over to trim entities. And for a second, if we focus on the property manager, there are five different ways to trim segments in the SOLIDWORKS sketch. There's also a standalone extend entities command. But with practice and understanding what the tool does, power trim can do everything. And the way that it works is we just click and hold down the mouse. You can see that little line going across. Now the hidden undo, notice that red dot. If you take your mouse back over that red dot and I have not taken my finger off of the left mouse button yet, you'll bring that segment back. So it's a click and drag in order to get the trimming to work inside of power trim. Click and drag. And I could continue this process to clean it up. But the reason I use this so much is it also has an integrated extend command. So we'll just kind of click and you can see the orange preview. I'm going to come over and touch this other line that I've trimmed away and it'll extend one line to that virtual intersection. Again, we can click here. The preview is attached to the end of the mouse. Click again and we can reconnect and redefine that sketch. So power trim trims, power trim extends. Power Trim also deletes. So it's a super useful tool. Now I've deleted everything and I would need to use a control Z to bring it back, but this is one of those commands that if you spend just a, a little bit of time getting familiar with it, it can A, save you some real estate on your SOLIDWORKS UI, but also save you quite a bit of time just because it's, it's got so much integrated inside of it. So just a, just a few more and I really found myself struggling with, with kind of eliminating things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, so I do realize I'm going fast and I apologize. I wanna you know, give you guys all the most bang for your buck here. Um, but I wanna talk about virtual sharps and ways to share sketches and leverage contour selection. Again, I hope this is stuff you use and you've seen before, but if not, we'll go into a little bit of detail about what virtual sharps are and you know, how you can create them on your own. So a virtual sharp, um, if you're not familiar with it, is an extension of where the geometry used to be. So here we have a sharp corner. We've got a 45 millimeter dimension. And if we go in and add something such as a sketch fillet, and we'll specify maybe a five millimeter radius, because of the setting called keep constrained corners, which is on, when I select this vertex and add in a sketch fillet, SOLIDWORKS maintains the design intent of that vertex and keeps my 45 millimeter dimension in there. Now, if I do a really quick undo with a control Z and I add that fillet in a second time and I deselect keeps constrained corners, you can see that it deletes that particular dimension. So whether or not those virtual sharps and dimensions are kept is really down to an order of operations. It needs to be defined first. But what if we don't have that dimension in there, we create that fillet, and now we want a dimension to where that vertex was. That's where a virtual sharp comes into play. Maybe not so much on sketching, but definitely in drawings, this technique I see used quite a bit. So we can add a virtual sharp by using the understated sketch point command. Now, in order to do that, we need to pre-select the two segments that intersect. 
So we'll just hold down the control key. They're pre-selected. I don't have the sketch point on my shortcut toolbar because I don't use a ton of sketch points in SolidWorks. But when I do click the sketch point, SolidWorks will generate that virtual sharp. And there are options in the, uh, in the system options to change how that virtual sharp is displayed. But now we can just easily dimension it as if that point was there to begin with. But there's another way that we can create a virtual sharp. We don't even need to draw anything. All we need to do is have a dimension command turned on, and we can right-click on a segment and choose Find Intersection. So when I select the horizontal line, SOLIDWORKS generates the virtual sharp and has actually pre-selected it for the dimension. So now I can come over here and create that 45 millimeter dimension. So for any of those situations where you need that sharp corner, you can create a virtual sharp, go ahead and dimension it, and then you know, maintain that appropriate design intent. So another example I want to talk about here, sharing a sketch, leveraging the contour selection functionality. This is one of those that uh, I tend to forget about. Maybe I don't leverage it as much as I could inside of SolidWorks. But this allows us to have one primary, maybe layout sketch, depending on how you want to phrase it, and then we can reuse it over and over and over. So here's a little simple sketch. We go into edit sketch mode here. Another nice little enhancement. Uh, I like to leverage, or not enhancement, excuse me, but a little tip. Always having your sketches go normal too. Right there, system options sketch auto rotate view normal to sketch plane on creation and sketch edit. That's a nice, uh, nice option they put in there for the last couple of releases. Probably been in there a lot longer than I remember it. Um, but I've got a sketch that has a ton of information, all overlapping contours and all that good stuff. But we go choose an extruded boss and we can see we don't get a preview. Also notice that strange little symbol to the lower right of my mouse. That represents contour selection. And if you need to enable it, over here in the Property Manager, we can just expand where it says Contour Selection. And now the sketcher and the features becomes very, very intuitive. I've got all these different possible solutions. As I mouse over the geometry, I can select, for example, just the outer profile of, of my model, specify a depth, change my directions as I see fit, and we can go ahead and create it. I could repeat this process by pre-selecting the sketch, either from the graphics window, something as simple as selecting that arc right there, or we can go over to the feature manager tree, select the sketch, and there we can see that sketch contour symbol, and just pre-select. Just highlight, I'm gonna use the F key here to jump over to an extruded cut, and we'll leverage contour selection, and now we'll just go through. And we can either pick the regions, the areas in between the sketch entities, or the entities themselves, and I'm selecting a total of six circles, and we want them to be through all in conditions. And now that sketch is shared between the Boss Extrude 1 and Cut Extrude 1. The little hand represents kind of like a Windows file share. And we could repeat this process over and over and over. So this is a nice, efficient way of creating geometry that's essentially all parallel to one another. That's the one thing you do have to understand is I really can't do anything uh, crazy with adjusting sketch planes or anything like that. But as long as I can reuse this sketch, I can essentially build this feature from one sketch and leverage it again and again and again. So it's a nice way to create one more you know, complex, uh, powerful sketch, and then all the features share that same sketch. We've got one sketch that contains all that design intent, really makes it easy uh, for any, any type of, of design changes that you, that you may need to leverage. Okay, so again, you know, this is the last, the last group I have, doing my best to kind of filter it down to something that's, that's manageable. Um, but leverage the intersection curve command. This is kind of a tricky operation. It's, it's difficult to find a, a generic case of where you would always want to use intersection curve. Uh, but for me, this is one of those kind of save the day sketch commands, or I jokingly say get out of jail free type of operations. Um, also, leveraging the ability in SOLIDWORKS, if you have an edge, 
you can actually select the edge and insert sketch. The software will build a plane perpendicular to the end of that edge or sketch or curve and then automatically put you into uh, to sketch mode. So I'm going to jump into that black and gray model that you have there and just kind of show you why I think intersection curve is so powerful. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, grab this part here. And I've got a number of, of features here, but I'm just going to insert this or edit this sketch. Here's another little tip I like to leverage, a construction grid for my sketch splines. Makes it really easy to control, add dimensions, add symmetry in there. And I think it's pretty obvious that I don't have symmetry and I do want to have a fully symmetric sketch. So you can add a symmetry relation after the fact, and this is what happens behind the scenes when SOLIDWORKS uh, creates sketch mirrors for us. So let's go ahead and select this point, control key, the horizontal line, control key, this point, and in the pop-up toolbar, we will have the make symmetric relation. So I kind of call these way after the fact sketch mirrors. You can always add them in there to control your design intent and everything is nice and coincident to my sketch spline grid, so it makes it really easy to define the behavior of the sketch and generate a nice, a nice little bell curve shape in here. So this particular sketch on the screen is actually the input for a revolve surface. I'm going to flip over here and go ahead and turn on a few surfaces here. And let's take a look at the geometry that I have. So there's my revolve surface. This little spiral is actually created from a very simple surface sweep. The inputs for this surface sweep are literally two lines. There's a horizontal line that's my sweep profile, a vertical line that's the path, and maybe a side note about surface sweeps. Typically, we want to keep them from twisting, but there are times where we can invoke a twist. And under the profile twist option, we can say twist value and one revolution. And what I'm going to leverage these two sketches for is a way to create a three-dimensional curve. So on the sketching toolbar, and I realize I'm not leveraging that shortcut toolbar all the time, try to show a couple different ways of doing things, we have kind of hiding under convert entities the intersection curve. Now this works inside a 2D sketch, so you can already be in edit sketch mode, or in this case, I'm outside of a sketch, so it auto creates a 3D sketch, and all I need to do is select my two surface bodies. Helps if you actually turn on that command here. And SOLIDWORKS will generate a curve in between them. So let me walk through that again. I'll just kind of show you how that works. I'll go ahead and I'll grab intersection curve. Here we can see the property manager surface body one, surface body two. It's not a require that you use surface bodies. Uh, you could have surfaces and solids and things like that. But there we can see that shape in between there. So a really easy way to create more complex geometries. And we'll just do a real quick tab to hide, and there we can sh uh, see the shape of that curve. Now, even though it's not necessary in SOLIDWORKS anymore because we can directly create circular profile sweeps, I'm going to select that curve, hit the S key, and I've got insert sketch. And there we can see my sketching origin is right at the end of the curve. So behind the scenes, SOLIDWORKS is making a plane normal to the end of the curve, and I could go ahead and draw in maybe a little circular profile there. And there's sketch number two for my sweep. So there's that reference plane, that shortcut way to create planes perpendicular to endpoints ends of curves, and SOLIDWORKS will insert a sketch on there for you. And just to make it look a little bit more complete, again, this isn't necessary because there are circular profile sweeps in SOLIDWORKS now, but sometimes I like to do things the way that I, I learned them long, long ago. So there we can see just another, another type of uh, way to leverage some of these maybe lesser known uh, sketching tools. So editing the sketch plane, don't forget about that one. Um, I hope everybody knows about it, but if you don't, either left or right click your sketch, there we can see the icon right there, edit sketch plane. You can move a sketch plane from you know, one plane to another. I experienced too many people deleting sketches and rebuilding. This can save you some of that work. 
Another tool that, this is a really old one, um, but modify sketch. This is a great one because it moves the entire sketch, not just the entities within the sketch. So you can use modify sketch to reposition the sketch origin or reverse the X and Y directions if you need to. Um, so these last few, leverage the command search inside of SOLIDWORKS to find out where they are. Just don't have enough time to talk about every single one of them. Fit splines. If you have a group of segments, you know, broken segments in your sketch and you need them to be one continuous entity, the fit spline command will do that. It will blend a spline based on a user-defined tolerance and really smooth that geometry out. It's a way to get, you know, nice C2 curvature out of, out of any sketch. And I think of the reverse of that is the split segment command. If you have a line, for example, and you need to turn it into two lines, or you have a circle and need to turn it into multiple, um, but maintaining that circular continuity, uh, split segment is the way to do it. And just because I like it so much, let's make a really quick, simple sketch. And there's my line. Right-click on it kind of hidden now. They put it under sketch tools, but you can say split entities. And a little bit of a name change there, but just left click on it. And now my one line is two lines. Now they maintain that, that collinear continuity right there, but now I have two, two separate lines. It works just like circles as well. If I just click and drag in a real quick circle, right click sketch tools, split entities, I can turn this circle into four coradial arcs. So split entities, definitely one that I would recommend add to that shortcut toolbar. I don't have it there yet, um, but it can be a, a really, really big, big time saver. So last few minutes, I'll go ahead and, and open it up for questions. I realize I went very, very quickly. And with that said, still went a little bit long. So if anybody has any questions, please send them in on the chat. If you don't have any questions now, you know, fire them away to my email address. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, you know, tips and tricks is all about sharing knowledge. I know that there are ways that you guys use SOLIDWORKS that I'm probably not aware of. I see this happen to me all the time in my class. I'll stumble across something that I think is amazing. I tell my coworkers, and they inform me that it's old news, and they've been using it for years. So... Uh, if you have any tips and tricks and sketching, you know, and you want to share them, send them on in. Um, definitely like to share information from the user community as well. So, again, thank you, everybody, everyone, for showing up, and I'll turn it back over to Bob. We really do appreciate um, you guys spending some time with us. We got, well, we've got eight more presentations, some really good information coming up this week. Pop on over, spend some time more with us again. So, thank you very much.